Hey guys, welcome back to my garden. Um, it is now seed starting time here in Canada. And I'm just gonna go over where some of the seeds starting that we will be doing. But I wanna show you what I start my seeds with. I did this last year and I just thought I'd share it this year because you don't have to go out and buy extra seed starting mix to start your seeds. Um, this actually worked very well for me. Um, this is the, this is an organic pro mix potting soil mix so you can use this in pots and since I did do a lot of um, vegetables grown in containers uh, this was very useful for me but this bag I purchased it is literally four times the amount of um, pro mix that you'd get in the 28 liters so it's 112 liters and what I do is I just take a portion of this so this is probably not even going to be about one eighth of this bag to do my seed starting so what I did was I um, just put some of the soil in here and you can use any type of screening that you want. Um, typically, you want one that's got about four inches by four inches, something like chicken wire that's the small little chicken wire. Um, I just happened to have this little wire fruit basket thing that I found worked really well for me, but typically you can do something similar. So you want to make sure it's got a large enough um, that the soil can go through but you want to get some of the bigger items out of this mix because this has um, organic matter in here it's going to have some wood chips in it it's going to have some sticks it's going to have let's see I'll show you there's some sticks and stuff in here so what I'm doing is I just pouring the soil into the basket that I have here but you'd want to put it on your wire tray or whatever setup that you have and you're just going to sift it in and then as you sift it, the smaller particles are gonna fall through. And then what you're gonna be left with is some of the larger pieces. Here I have a bunch of mix that I'm not gonna use this and maybe some of it might be just bunched up, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And I'm not gonna try to fix that. And I'm just putting it in a container that I'll be using to grow some of my plants in this year. So it's not going to waste. It's just that this bigger matter is gonna be at the bottom of that container. These are big things that is not going to help your seed starting. So this is why I'm sifting it. This is why you'd sift so that you don't have these big chunks. That's not That could inhibit your rooting of your seedling to try and get down. This could block the roots. So that's why you want to get rid of these bigger items. So that's what I'm doing. And then by the time I'm finished, I'm left with this nice fine soil mix that I can moisten. And I'll show you later on when I start my seeds how I moisten it and how we're going to go from there. Okay guys, so now I have this potting mix sifted. I'm going to add some of this earthworm castings. And I'm gonna add some of this to the sifted soil so that I can uh, make a really good start soil for my seedlings. So once the roots start developing, it's got the, some goodness from the worm castings. So I won't need a whole lot of this, but I'm just going to take probably about a cup worth here and just add it to all of this. And I will mix this in. And this is very dry, so I am going to be adding some water to be moist in this soil. I'm trying to give it some benefits right from the beginning. I'm going to add some water to this. So now the plan here is we want to get this soil nicely mixed and moistened. You don't want it to be dripping wet when you squeeze it. And just blend it together with those worm castings along with the potting mix that I start, I'm doing my seedling starts with. And I think we've got it to a really nice texture. So here I have my plans of what I want to do with my seed starting trays. So in this zone, I can start my broccoli, my cauliflower, my cabbage, my kale, and some of my herbs. So that's what I'm going to start with today. So I'm going to fill up my seedling trays. So here's one of my first seedling trays and just kind of giving it a little bit of pressure. You don't want it too compacted, but you want it compacted enough that there's no air inside the soil. Um, 
So this is my first seedling tray. And I'm just going to continue to do the exact same thing with these other three trays. So guys, I've got all these seedling trays, filled them and pressed them until they're pretty firm. You want to make sure there's no air inside the soil. Seedlings don't do really well. The roots don't do well with air in the soil. So you just want to make sure that there's no empty spaces inside there. And I don't have these quite fully filled right up because I will just layer the soil on top of these. Um, the idea when you're doing your seedlings is you want to make sure that your depth of planting into the trays is twice the size of each seedling. So I'm going to take first, I'm going to do broccoli and cauliflower in the first tray. So I'm only doing three plants in each. Now I am going to do a couple of seeds into each one just to ensure that I am going to get germination. Here's the tiny broccoli seeds. And so I will do a couple in each one and then I will cover them. What I did last year, and I will do it probably this year too, is I did not um, thin the seeds. So what I did do is I took the plants and just separated them and put them into a bigger pot. This way each, I may still get six plants of broccoli or maybe even seven. Like I'm going to kind of overseed. These were seeds from last year and I just want to ensure that they germinate. So I've got a bunch of seeds in each one. So if this is your first time um, doing seed starts, I'm gonna kind of give you a little rundown of the things that you will need at least to start this off. You won't need a grow light. You won't need a heat mat or anything like that. You wanna first start off with at least one of these bigger trays. So here I have two trays. I'm only doing one for right now. Um, and this tray, the big tray, comes with a dome. So this one has the clear plastic dome as well as the tray. So there's the domes that's going to go on top and then your tr insert trays. You want to make sure that you have this separate from your seedling trays, which are these things, the little tiny cells. These are your cells. And I can feel that these are still nice and squishy on the side, which means I've not compacted it too much. Um, so this here, you'll want to get a few of these and then you'll, they'll sit inside the bigger tray. And the best method is to bottom water. And I know it feels like you want to water from the top because that's something we always do when watering out in the garden, but just trust the process. You bottom water for the best results. So I've already got my broccoli here. I'm going to do some cauliflower and these are all seeds that I used last year and they're just a little bit tinier than the broccoli seeds and I'll put a couple into each tray as, as well here and the most another really important thing is to make sure that you label your trays. So I will be labeling every single one of these trays so that I know what seedlings are in the container. So I've got about three seedlings, maybe a little bit more in each one. And in this next one, I'm going to be doing cabbage and kale. So these are all cool weather crops. Um, I'm starting them early because they can actually go in the ground early, which is quite nice. As long as the soil is movable, you can put them in the ground. And actually, these plants really love the cooler weather. So I got my kale here. These seeds are approximately about the same size as the broccoli and the cauliflower. And I am putting in a little more than required to make sure I get a good germination rate, but also um, if I get extra, I get extra plants. Last year I grew kale and it was my first time growing kale and um, it was a wonderful experience. I enjoyed eating the kale and I'm hoping that this year I can have more kale plants. Um, kale is very versatile, does really well in the freezer. Um, if you put lettuce or anything in the freezer, you know it wilts and go mush, but because these are cool weather crops, they do so well. It actually. I tried doing a fall crop, which I realized I started too late last year, which is a lesson that I learned.
but the kale did really well and outlived the other plants, which was really good. So I got kale. The next one is going to be cabbage. So we'll do the exact same thing. Put a few seedlings into each one. And just like the other ones, the seeds are approximately the same size. So you only, they're probably about a millimeter, just a little bit bigger than a millimeter each. And you'll want to put at least depth two millimeters into the soil. So I literally just have to cover this with soil. I don't really need that much more. And I might've overseeded that one too, but it's okay because all seedlings may not germinate and who knows how well the plants will do out there. And I might not have all of them be successful. And at least this is going to give me a chance and opportunity. Up next in the next soil block, I am going to do, um, I'm going to start with, some basil. I have more basil coming in the mail, which I'm looking forward to. And once it comes in the mail, I will start seed start then. But here is my basil seeds and they are tinier than the broccoli and the cauliflower. They do amazingly well with a lot of seeds sown in one cell. So these ones, they will grow, they can grow, keep growing together in the same cell. Unlike the other ones, these are herbs, so you can over sow these as well. And I'm probably going to put about six seedlings in each cell. And this one is the large leaf basil. And I found that these did really well last year. So I've got about six seeds in each cell. Actually, maybe. Yeah, I'll do that. And then in the next one, I've got my sweet basil. Now, my sweet basil was my most favorite basil to eat last year. Just the smell of it, smelt, it smelled sweet. Um, and it, the taste of it was one of my favorites as well. And I planted so much of it last year that I really don't have a lot of seeds in here. But that's okay. It means it was good, put to good use. So I'll do the exact same thing, about six seeds per cell. Look at that, I still have some seeds left over. There's still some in here as well. And um, last year I wind up doing some basil in the herb garden as well, my herb container. So I'll do that this year as well. So it'll be direct sown and it did really well with that as well. Up in this cell here I have, um, I still have oregano growing. Oregano is a perennial so it'll continue to grow this year so this year it'll come up back up um, so I'm hoping to get some more oregano growing so I can actually possibly even save some oregano this year for over the winter these oregano seeds are literally like dust but they grow really well so I'm going to just put a whole bunch in here it's an herb each little thing is like a single leafing you want to put Quite a bit of seeds into each cell and last year I grew these as well into my herb garden and it's still doing well actually I was able to um, harvest from it in the winter time because the snow didn't come until after really come until after Christmas so we did have snow before Christmas but then it melted away and we still had some warmer weather and it continued to provide me with some herbs in the winter time and the next thing that I did not grow successfully last year, I tried direct sowing my celery and um, I wanted to be able to have celery in my garden last year and that wasn't successful. So, but we'll see how this goes. I'm also going to over sow into these little cells as well, about six. Um, celery, it's the same kind of thing where each stalk kind of grows and I'm sure it will grow out more. Um, but this is my first time and I'm hoping that this is successful and I have more celery coming and um, We'll see how that does as well And I'll start those one when they come in the mail and right now. This is what I'm going to be starting and so I'm just going to Take the soil a very little bit about and just very lightly put the soil on top of it You don't don't have to hardly add any soil to the top of these And this is probably gonna be enough soil this little handful for all of my seedlings because you just want to cover it
You don't want to sow them too deeply. If you sow the seeds too deeply, it takes up so much energy for it to grow out of the soil that some of them won't make it, seedlings won't make it just from trying to get through the soil. So if you have it too deeply sown, too compacted, too much moisture, um, a lot of these things can actually prohibit germination. So I'm gonna go and get these um, labeled and uh, then um, I will bottom water it just so that the soil is nice and moist. When you cover this, you wanna keep it covered. There's no point of opening it up and checking on it. No point of keep watering it. That's why you're gonna water it to begin with. The dome itself will create moisture inside the container. So why, while this is sitting there and it's all getting steamed up inside, it's gonna create its own moisture. It's working like a little um, guard, um, greenhouse. So this is a baby greenhouse and this is just gonna act as the barrier to allow the moisture to rise and to go back into the soil and it continue to moisten the seedlings so you shouldn't have to do anything else other than your first watering. So I'm gonna water these and then put the lid on it. I've gotta label it, water these, keep it in here. Let's bottom water, oops, these, and I'll just start to moisten the soil to the top. I'm not gonna put too much moisture in there because I don't wanna overwater it. There we are. And then I still have to label these. So I've got these little ice cream sticks that I've just broken in half because I want it to be short. And I'm gonna put them in here. So I will label each one. And so I'm just gonna write on here what they're going, what the vegetable that they are. So I'm going to do, I put call for cauliflower. Large leaf basil, LLB for the first one here. And then we've got sweet basil, so S. B. Oregano, then we have our oregano and our celery. Actual celery on there. That is my seed starts so far for this year. I'm excited about to start for our 2023's garden. So I'm just going to go and put this over here. All right, guys, that is my first seed starting uh, for 2023. I'm super excited about this. I hope that this is successful. Um, last year it went pretty well. I did learn a few things and I'm hoping to apply it this year in this year's garden. The most important thing, once those seedlings do come out of the soil and you start seeing them to grow, they need light. So that is the most important time to get them to where there is light. Um, I do get a lot of sunlight here, which has helped keep my um, pepper plants alive all winter long. But not only that, um, uh, you were, your seedlings will get laggy if you don't provide them with the proper amount of sunlight. So I do have um, some uh, grow lights here and I have one of my shells set up so that it's really close to the light. So when um, they do start coming out of the ground, you take the dome off and then allow them to continue to grow. And that's how I've got my setup this year. And guys, I just wanna thank you so much for coming along with me on my journey. And I hope that you guys join me in 2023. If you're not already um, subscribed or following along on my journey, um, if you want to just go ahead and follow along with me by clicking the subscribe button. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and helped boost my video. I want to thank you so much, guys, for coming along with me. Until next time.